do 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 What's going on guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Shantae Marie here and I'm a lifestyle vlogger here on YouTube. I strive to make content that can help you guys out in some way, shape, or form. In today's video, we are going to be talking about my first trimester of pregnancy. I said in my last video that I was gonna, you know, talk about this and I wanted to make sure that I filmed it and got it up for you guys so if you guys are new make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already go ahead and thumbs up this video and I want you guys to comment in this video let me know if you guys think that I should do vlogmas this year today's video I'm literally going to be telling you guys the 15 symptoms that I have experienced in my first trimester and just kind of going into a little bit of detail about each of those I figured that my first second and third trimester video should be more like this and then I can just like focus and hone in on certain symptoms if I want to make separate videos. So I'm going to be looking at my phone because I made the list on here. But let's go ahead. Number one is cramping. Like y'all, I am not even playing around with you when I say that cramping is like a horrible symptom that you have in pregnancy. Like. I have had it so bad in the beginning I honestly I thought I was really starting my period and then it ended up being like I found out that that was a symptom of pregnancy and I mean there were days that it made it really hard for me to even go to work because the cramping was that serious so cramping is definitely a symptom that you experience and for me it was honestly worse than my period symptoms because obviously I'm not like on birth control or anything to like control it and it's literally because like the baby is growing and your uterus is growing and it's just it's painful number two is actually going number two like I had such severe pain when I needed to go to the bathroom that I actually went to the hospital five times like I went to the emergency room five times because I swore up and down that I was having like an ectopic or ectopic pregnancy and like if you guys don't know what that is I highly recommend looking it up but I thought that for sure that that's what was happening but every time I would go like they would just tell me that everything was fine and everything was normal and then I eventually found out that it was literally just things were shifting around in my body and I was having trouble going to the bathroom so whether it's constipation hard like number twos a going number two situation is just horrible like I do not know how to explain it and it could have its own video because it's that bad Number three is nausea. So I actually started getting nauseous about week six of being pregnant and then from there on out it just got worse and worse and worse and I got to the point that I couldn't take prenatal vitamins because those just make me super sick which even now if I take them it makes me super sick so like I'm doing something totally different now um, which I'll probably make a video about but like I was sick all the time and I don't even know if there's any way to really control it because the doctors swear up and down that uh, vitamin B6 and Unisome makes you not nauseous but Unisome is a freaking sleeping pill and for those of us who work 9 to 5 it's impossible to take that. I missed weeks and weeks of work for being sick like I'm talking probably three weeks of work for being sick and the rest of the time I was just sucking it up and going to work because obviously I have to make a living so yeah nausea is no freaking joke number four we're gonna be getting into the nitty-gritty now but number four for me was bleeding um, and I when I say bleeding I mean spotting not exactly just full on bleeding, but I definitely spotted, I have spotted all throughout this trimester, including including part of my second trimester. So when I'm filming this video right now, I'm actually 20 weeks pregnant, and I spotted at six weeks, at seven and a half weeks, at nine weeks, at 
10 weeks, 11 weeks, and then I didn't spot for a while and I actually ended up spotting at like 16 weeks and it hasn't happened again since then but I actually found out that I have a subchronic hematoma and that's the reason more than likely the reason for my spotting but yeah um, spotting they will tell people will tell you that it's normal but I would never take other people's word for it. If you are spotting, I highly recommend going to your doctor and figuring it out because had I not have pushed the issue in the beginning, I would still have been sitting there at 16 weeks like, why am I spotting? So it's definitely something not to play around with in my opinion. All right, number five is the darkening of your nipples and basically all of your private areas they darken to the point of like I don't even remember what color mine were at the beginning but like when they tell you that it's gonna get dark like girl it's gonna get dark like it's gonna get they are going to change colors like I went from literally like I don't even I can't even I don't I can't even explain it like but they get dark that's all you need to know so on top of your private areas getting dark number six for me anyways was um, the pregnancy line I'm gonna pop in a picture but I believe that they call it like the linea negra or something like that like I, I mean yeah. but basically at week um, 14 for me this line started to become apparent and I actually have like my cream that I put on my stomach at night has really prevented that from fully coming through. This cream that I'm using is a miracle worker and for any like woman of color I highly recommend it. I am going to be putting it in my monthly favorites this month but yeah uh, that sucker's popping through like you can see it. It's very light for me, but I really attribute that to what I'm putting on my stomach every single night. Number seven is hair growth. I can literally shave and by the end of the day, I already have hair coming through. And I don't know if it's like my hair is just darker or what, because I always, I've always said this on my YouTube channel, but I'm just like naturally hairy. I'm just a hairy freaking individual. And I feel like I shave and within two seconds like I'm hairy again like to the point that most of the time I just don't even worry about it because it's a lot to shave when you're pregnant it's it's honestly difficult I'm only at 20 weeks and I already feel like it's too difficult for me to shave my legs sometimes it just takes a lot of energy so yeah the hair growth is real but also and this is number eight your freaking acne your hormones are like going crazy. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> That's another thing. You're like, ugh. I don't even know how to explain it, but I've never really had allergies or anything and all of a sudden I kind of do. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but that gets different. Number eight is your acne. Um, pregnancy acne is not a joke. Like. When I tell you that sometimes I just get real worried because the acne is just out of control, it's crazy. Like right now, I am dealing with so much acne. I don't know if it's picking up like on my little screen. It doesn't look like it's picking up, but that's the reason why I beat my face today because I got like homegirl right here. There was so many up here. Basically, it looked like a mask of acne. I woke up one day and it was just there and it honestly was the most painful acne of my life on top of that I have noticed that my back is super broke out but I don't ever really notice it until I'm like putting on a shirt and in front of the mirror or something I'm like dang my back is like really broken out but it's just hormones like I don't think that I will have acne issues after I have my baby number nine is tiredness this stuff is not a joke like and you can think that you're not tired and then be doing all this stuff and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm really tired and I don't know how to deal with it. So just for example, I've been going like 100 miles an hour getting back into YouTube, working on my crochet company. And yesterday I was like, I'm going to just take a little bit of a nap and then get up and crochet some of my inventory. Your girl fell asleep at 6 o'clock at night and I slept until 8.30 this morning. So... I was clearly tired, but 
my body wasn't really telling me that I was tired and this is prime time like sleep time so I need to get it together and do a better job but yeah number 10 is headaches I have been getting headaches so freaking bad and I can honestly tell you if I get a headache I do not even result to Tylenol because Tylenol is seriously the worst medication ever it does absolutely nothing and it's really the only thing you can take when you're pregnant but if you have a headache literally drink caffeine like every single time I have a headache I drink a pop and I'm good to go like no headaches, no anything. That's exactly what's in this cup right here. And you know, I don't have a headache and all I've drank is like this much of it. So if you have a headache, try pop. I swear it works. Or anything with caffeine. It doesn't have to be pop, but I've, I do pop. 11 is mood swings. I feel like I have hit on this a million freaking times, but like some days I just wake up and you know, your girl just be crying and I'm like, my mom didn't raise a baby like my mom didn't raise me to be sitting in my room crying about ridiculousness you know like your girl is strong your girl is freaking just killing it right now emotionally but you know sometimes I do that and cry to myself at home so that's actually happened to me at like work too like someone has said something and I've been like talking to them and I just start crying for no reason so that's not like me at all, but I get it's the me for this next few months.